Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at the July deck from the King's Wild short series. This is Peter Dash Flash. Now, if you haven't heard of King's Wild Shorts, you really should check it out. It's the premier subscription service from King's Wild Project. Every single month does a completely unique and distinct design, drawing inspiration as he does from all sorts of different places. Uh, and the decks are some of the most creative and fun decks that I've seen. So it's a subscription service that I love and have been a member of for some time. Uh, but this particular deck is actually part of a sub-series. Every year during the subscription service, uh, he's produced a deck that is part of what he calls his War Series. This is actually the third deck in that series. The War Series uh, is inspired by a set of decks that was originally produced by the USPCC all the way back in 1918. And their War Series had four different decks with four different backs, paying homage to four branches of the military, the Artillery, Navy, Air Corps, and Tank Corps. So here we are, and Jackson Robinson has decided to uh, pay tribute to those decks with a War Series of his own. Uh, so like I said, this is the third deck in that series. Uh, there's also Old Ironsides, uh, as well as uh, the Noble Train deck, as a couple of the previous ones from that series. Uh, so you can check those out as well. One more to go that's going to be inspired by the Tank Corps, but let's jump into this one, inspired by the Air Corps. Now, first off, starting with the name of the deck, Peter Dash Flash, kind of an unusual name. Uh, that's actually the nickname for the P-51 Mustang, which is one of the fighters that was flown during World War II and into the Korean War. Uh, it was used as an escort plane for bomber missions and one of the more popular uh, planes during that era, particularly during World War II. And so that was the plane that inspired both the name of the deck uh, that Peter Dash Flash was kind of a common nickname for the plane, uh, as well as some of the designs that we see here. Uh, the tug case is a very monochromatic, very much in keeping with the original Inspiration deck, uh, the Air Corps deck. Uh, and it's just done in black and white on this matte cardstock. There's a really, really slight embossing here, uh, but very, very slight, not much to it at all. Uh, at the top, you've got the Peter Dash Flash with King's Wild Project and playing cards. The bottom, you've got Made in the United States of America by the USBCC, as I mentioned before. Uh, and you have a kind of an aerial battle scene going on in the back, including an image of that P-51 Mustang here in the front. Uh, you've got the spinning propellers, uh, the bullets whizzing through the air, and you've got a second plane uh, that's been shot down in the background. So a really cool action scene going on there. Uh, as you turn to the sides, you've got King's Wild Project number 13. Uh, you'll notice down here at the bottom, it says May 2020. Uh, this was originally intended to be the May deck in the series, but due to delays uh, around coronavirus uh, with the USBCC, uh, the deck ultimately was pushed back to July. Uh, the other side here, Made in the United States. Bottom, you've got your ad copy for King's Wild Project, including the ever-present uh, 1 Thessalonians verse down there. And then at the top, just says standard playing cards. Uh, the back here is gonna be the back design of the cards with, again, that really slight embossing. Take a look at that in a second. And you get just a little more printing on the inside with number 13, a uh, recurring number on a lot of King's Wild decks, as well as Lead a Quiet Life, just a small piece of the uh, Thessalonians first. We've got number 13 on the inner flaps and no printing on the interior of the tuck. Uh, so it's a really nicely illustrated deck uh, or tuck case, uh, but fairly simple, very monochromatic. I think that's one knock that some people have on it. I think it's a great homage because the original tuck case uh, was also monochromatic. Uh, so I think it's a really nicely done nod to that original deck. Uh, but that's the tuck case. So let's get into it now though and take a look at the cards. And here is the back design. You'll see a little bit of color coming into this one. Uh, now the secondary inspiration behind this deck, not just the uh, the original 1918 one, but is specifically looking at nose art. Uh, nose art were these interesting and unique kind of folk art paintings that pilots and squads would put onto the front fuselage of their planes. And it was used to identify the plane or a group of pilots or something like that. 
just a really interesting and unique uh, bits of artwork that we put there. And so a lot of the colors and designs that you'll see throughout here uh, are kind of a nod or inspired by that nose art. Uh, so here on the back design, uh, this center frame here, uh, and I'll show a picture over here you can see, uh, is very much in keeping with the original uh, deck that inspired it. He has, of course, swapped out the plane for that P-51 Mustang, which didn't exist at the time of the printing of the original deck. Uh, but looking here, you've got beautiful flourishes and leaf work and scroll work just going all through the center, uh, forming a really thick border in the center. And then you've got the framed up pictures of that uh, Mustang plane, complete with uh, some shark inspired nose art there on the front right by the propeller. Uh, very cool, and then little bits of color with the red and yellow border going around, as well as that poker border being broken up by these red, black, and yellow stripes. Again, inspired by the bars and uh, checkerboard patterns of color that we put onto different planes. A really beautiful weathered look, kind of captures that vintage feel, while at the same time giving you some extra little pops of color. Really like that back design. Uh, but now let's get to the extra cards and just fair warning, this is possibly the best Joker that I've ever seen. Uh, you get two almost identical Jokers, one black, one red, and they feature this image of a king riding on a bomb. A lot of people have mentioned that this uh, kind of reminds them of an old classic movie called Dr. Strangelove. Uh, and one of the more famous scenes from that movie, uh, one of the characters uh, rides a bomb, kind of like a cowboy down uh, as it explodes in the land below. But this picture was actually not inspired by Dr. Strangelove. Uh, it was actually originally inspired by some uh, nose art, uh, specifically some nose art that featured an image of a skeleton riding on a bomb in a very similar fashion. Uh, here's an image of what that looked like and that original uh, inspiration there. Uh, but here is Jackson Robinson's interpretation of it. He, of course, has put the king in all of his regalia, still very much recognizable as a king, but I love the shocked look on his face, that almost kind of cartoonish look on his face. Uh, he's got the, you know, kind of bull riding pose as he's riding that bull down. Uh, he's got the sword up, so he's like the suicidal king. He's got the sword up behind his head. And I even love the touch of the Texas uh, cowboy boots as he ride, rides down. Uh, there's a great video on YouTube where you can actually watch the uh, beginning artwork as Jackson puts this design together. And he kind of talks through some of the inspirations. I'll put a link down in the description where you can see that video. It's really cool to see his process of creating uh, this Joker in the original state. Uh, the background here, though, you've got the uh, metal rivets, very much kind of like panels of the plane. And the second Joker, very similar, but this time features the gas mask that you see on the King's Wild logo. So very cool Jokers. These are some of the best Jokers I've ever seen. Absolutely love those. Uh, you also get two other extra cards. You get a double backer gaff card and a U.S. flag card. Uh, again, kind of done in the style. You can see the rivets on there, almost like there's a flag painted on the side of a plane. The very cool little piece of uh, Americana there. Uh, now, going into the rest of the deck, and we'll start here with the Ace of Spades. Now, all of the Aces are gonna feature a uh, similar design in that they're you know kind of inspired by uh, individual planes. Now, I don't know if the names of the planes that you see over here, this one's called the Black Beauty. Uh, not sure if that's an actual plane. There are, were planes that were called Black Beauty and some of the other names, uh, or if this is just a fictional plane, but you can see kind of how the name of the plane we written on the side, like with the nose art, you've got Black Beauty written down the side, have a large spade pip with Peter Dash Flash, that Mustang plane featured there in the center, and lots of stripes, almost like insignia that you might see kind of decorating a plane. So the aces are all kind of inspired by different planes, complete with the name down the side. Uh, this one is blue, yellow, and black on the side, and all of the spades continue, but as I'll thumb through, you'll see that as we go to each suit, that color scheme changes. Uh, now getting into the number cards, you have uh, familiar styled pips, but they're kind of weathered to fit with the rest of the deck. You've got those big block numbers for the spade 
uh, index in the corner, uh, and then a smaller pit beneath. Really cool, uh, kind of very uh, industrial feel overall to this. Another touch I love are these little bombs underneath. Uh, as you go through the numbers, you'll see they've got a number of bombs that correspond to the value of the cards. You got five bombs here, six bombs here. Uh, those bombs are another nod to something you would see up near the nose art in a lot of planes. Uh, pilots would paint a bomb representing every time they flew on a mission. And so you'd be able to look at the side of the plane and see how many missions that plane had flown in. Uh, so a nice extra touch on these as well. Uh, now getting into the court cards. The court cards are familiar Jackson Robinson designs. He's used a very similar court style on a lot of his decks, but they are recolored to be very much in fitting with the theme of the deck. Uh, you'll see bits of blue and yellow and black, and that's matching that side border that you've got here on the spades. Uh, so really cool. I love that checkerboard pattern that's included in there. Uh, and then just little hits of orange as well. So very cool design on the courts. Uh, turning to the diamonds now, uh, the diamonds now are going to be inspired. Their plane is the Screaming Mini, and you got more kind of greens and reds coming in as the border here. And then the diamonds are going to be more of the same, just that kind of weathered look to the red. And then you get to the court cards, and again, they're kind of recolored. They don't match the spades. They match, you know, that red and green over here, so you'll see some of the green brought into the courts as well. So I got a again in keeping with kind of a changing pattern or a changing squadron if you will uh, for each one of the sets of courts. Uh, the clubs now bring in a brighter green uh, and the, that green and orange sidebar and then lots of that green and orange brought into these courts as well. And then down through the club number cards a lot more of the same. What plane have we got for the clubs? Well we have the black delta with that lightning bolt. I like the green and orange on that, it's a really good mix. So Black Delta is the plane for the clubs. And then last but not least are the heart courts with the black, white, and red. So you've got more of that black and white uh, that's brought into the courts here. Got a little heart patterning in there. Uh, so lots of beautiful designs on these. And then down through the heart number cards, complete with the red bombs. And then finishing out with the last of our planes, this is Ready Betty. Uh, with the orange and white pattern in the back. Just a great look to it. You can see those scratches really well in the heart there. Uh, so there's the Ace of Hearts. Uh, so that is the deck. As far as handling, USPCC deck, they're always going to handle great. Uh, they look fantastic in fans with that uh, border element there. Uh, and you can fan them from both directions. This side you'll get kind of the array of colors as you go through each of the different suits as well. Uh, as far as uses of the deck, it's a fantastic art deck, I think, first and foremost. That's usually uh, where King's Wild decks make their home, for me anyway. Uh, that said, it's still a pretty functional deck. There is one design element that does make it a little bit harder to use it for gameplay or even magic, and that is those different colorings of the border elements here. Uh, one thing you will notice if you want to use this for gameplay is that you get a little bit of color bleed on the fronts. Now, it doesn't show up when you're looking at the cards in the back just because that element is the same across, but if you tilt it just a little bit, maybe you can see this in the light, you can see actually the differences in the colors ever so slightly there, just allowing you to identify a little bit more about the cards while looking at it. And that doesn't quite disappear just because of how the ink bleeds the edges. That one little element keeps it from being super useful as a gameplay or magic deck. It's just a little bit much of a reveal. Uh, that said, you know, if you're a little bit less serious in your card game, trust the people around you a little bit more. I think it'd be a great deck for you to use for gameplay as well. Uh, so I have talked about the subscription at the beginning. This is the standard version of the deck. It actually comes in three different versions. I don't get the gilded version of the deck, but I do get the limited version of the deck, and that's what this one is. Now, all three versions have the same cards inside. The only difference is the gilded ones are, of course, uh, with gilded edges, but they do come with different tucks on each one. So you'll see with the limited, this one comes with a bright red tuck. Same designs on it all the way around, same patterning, and it does come with a custom seal uh, complete with a numbered edition at the top. So I've got number 265 out of 500 in this edition on this really cool uh, American flag inspired seal. 
uh, so you can get the different versions of it. Like I said, I, my subscription includes both the standard and the limited. Those are the two decks I get every single month. Uh, so that's it. That is the look at the Peter Dash Flash deck from King's Wild Project. I uh, hope you enjoy this look and finding out a little bit more about this classic Warplane. Uh, definitely a deck that I am enjoying adding to the collection. Uh, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what other decks you want to see. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. And I'll see you for the next one.